You're listening to Slightly Warped, the podcast that tackles topics from every angle. Here's Richard Kearney and Ryan Foley. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Slightly Warped, the podcast where we talk about anything, everything, and you never know from week to week what you're going to get. I'm Rick. My man Big Show is with me again today. Show, how you doing, What's man? What's happening? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm, I'm good. I'm good. How was your weekend? Is it cold in your neck of the woods today? It, it is. Um, coolish. I won't say cold yet because that's still coming. But man, very cool. Kansas City broke a fifty-year record for for being as cold as it's been this time of year. Really, down to twenty-eight degrees last night. Oh, we didn't we didn't get down that low. We, right we, now we're we, at we get close to the freezing mark. Right um, now we're at forty-four, and it's five o'clock here. So wow, yeah, it that, got cold. It's it's been cold the last two days. Yeah, we're sitting at fifty-three right now. Um, but our low was 31, 32, somewhere in that area. So we've avoided the the freeze point up until this point. Yeah, I guess 32 a, is freezing, but right. when it dropped down, it started coming back up immediately, you know, so not enough to do any damage if you have any flowers or anything, but you might as well say winter's coming. It's on the way. <laughs> Get ready for it. A little Game of Thrones reference. I like that. Yeah. Now, I will also say this. I don't usually complain about it being too hot or too cold because once we get one, you're wishing for the other. And then when it comes around, it just flip flops. So I just go with the flow. If I'm cold, I just don't like give me a sweater. To, I just don't like to go from 70 to 30 in less than a 12 hour period. That kind of sucks. It does kind of suck. And that's that, why I pay for electricity in the house to get some AC and heat. So we're good. Yep. So, um, check it out, my friend. This first topic, having a business mindset. Um, and what I mean by that is what it takes to run a company and to deal with things on the outside world at the same time. You need to get that? Nah, just let it ring. We're good. OK, um, I want to talk about the pros and cons of that. And um, I guess I'm going to start by asking you this kind of question, because I know that you own your own company. What type of leader would you say you are as in taskmaster? Um, you spread everything around. Are you an enabler? What would you say? Yes, all of the above. <laughs> um. But correction, I don't own my own company. I run the company. I don't own it yet. Um, That's all right, though. You're in that mindset. You're in in that mindset. Uh, mindset. I treat it like it's mine. Um, But I, I can go back to when I was, you know, when we had the intermodal side and running more people and more employees. I was an... I was an enabler, I think, more than a uh, authoritarian type leader. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Um, I always gave people the benefit of the doubt. Sometimes I was too soft and got taken advantage of. Um, Interesting. Relying on people's good side versus, you know, knowing that they're full of crap and calling them on it type of thing. So I'm, I've learned a lot since then, but I know nobody, you can't rely on nobody but yourself. That is the truth. And that's the uh, thing about running a production company. It's just me right now. I don't know how I would be if I had people under me. Obviously, that's the dream. That's the goal. But I wouldn't say I would be a taskmaster, but I probably would be a micromanager. And I don't want to be like that because I know too many people like that. And um, I definitely it's, it's am not part a of my micromanager. Mindset. 
although to be an effective and and I think a successful uh, leader, you have to have all of those qualities. You have to be an authoritarian. You have to be a micromanager. You have to be an enabler. You have to be a dictator. <laughs> You know, there there are times and places for each. No different than being a parent, I think, you know, kind of like how uh, you treat yeah. your kids. Yeah, because, you know, from conception to success, that business is your baby, you know. Yeah. But nobody will ever run it the way you actually want it ran. Yeah. And that brings me to the pros and the cons. Let's start with the pros. What would you say the pros are? of running a business your own schedule kind of dictate you know uh when you work when you don't work as long as the work gets done you know um would you I mean, say you have complete control of my time some yeah of of your time and the way things are are to be done. Um. Yeah, I, for the most part, in my particular position I'm in now, yes, I kind of have that. There are times that I know that I need to be at my desk to make sure that I keep everybody moving and running. So I know from hours of blank to blank, I should probably, if I want to take advantage of anything you know that i need to be in front of a computer but you know if i'm on vacation with the family if i have a laptop i can do that anywhere you know i don't have to be at home i know when we were when my daughter had dance uh competition in branson this summer you know i was in the hotel room working for a few hours before i got down to her competition so i mean i can do it just about anywhere as long as i make sure i have that time frame too to look on the boards for to find loads, you know, that type of thing. Now I would say another pro is when things are going good, it makes you look good. Oh yeah. But when they're bad. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that's the con. When things are going bad, it's all on you. So yes, sir. those kind of go hand in hand. And, and another con that I would say is, um, in some cases, you are, or at least to some degree, you feel solely responsible. And that can lead to a lot of, um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, when when you feel like it's all on you. Pressure. Pressure, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. There's always pressure, especially... Because I know if I don't do my job, it's not only affecting, you know, my wife and kids, but it's affecting every person that I work for, their wife and kids. You know, so I feel like I have a lot of responsibility. Yeah. To keep I everybody mean, in the in the black. And, and, and that pressure can get to you. I mean. Yes. I will say this, though. That without... I mean, with all the pressure that there could be, I would take it every day knowing that I'm responsible for creating and building something that, you know, people can get something out of, whether it be some type of enjoyment or some type of satisfaction. Yes. So I agree that, with you. That's the overriding thing for me. I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. I agree on that one. Okay. Let's uh, slide into the second topic here. Um, old dog, new tricks. And what I mean by that is, are people, people, <laughs> for our English speaking audience, are people really capable of change? And you try to this put could both be, those words together. People. Yeah, <laughs> people. <-able. laughs> and, and this doesn't matter. We could talk about job stuff personal professional it doesn't matter just in general are people really people really capable of change and you know if you're a 20 something this probably doesn't even matter to you because you know you are just finding your way in the world but i'm talking about men and women of a certain age like us who have 
done something the same year in and year out. And we've come to a point where we either want to or need to change something. And how, how important is it that we either bring about that change or even back it up a little bit more, decide whether or not we want to make changes. And when I say changes, it could be anything. Uh, change of job, you, you could want to go on a diet. Um, so there's a lot of different factors, you know, big or small. Are, so is, what's the question? Are, are we really capable of doing it? Yes. Are what? we capable of change oh, yeah. after doing the same thing over and over for years and years? There's Yeah, there's plenty of uh, examples. I mean, just using losing weight for that instance, you know, people losing weight and keeping it off. Uh, right. And, and I guess to also... dive deeper into that example, you know how there are some people that will go on a diet and I hate diets because the first three letters in the word diet or die, it should really be a lifestyle change, but that's a whole nother subject. Most people can do that. They get to their goal, but then you have others that say they're going to do it, never do it or do it, try it and don't, don't follow through with it. And you know, what separates the person that does it from the person that, does not do it. Self-discipline, mindset. Mm, mindset is a good one. So, yeah, it, it is definitely something that it'll depend on each person as well as the situation. Yes. I mean, um, so how bad... But you... here's the thing, if you're talking about on the side of you know, that's making a change, i.e. physical change. Mm -hmm. But if you're talking about people's beliefs, personalities, I don't think they're capable of really changing it. I mean, even the Bible says that a dog will return to its waller and a pig to its, I mean, a, a dog to its vomit and a pig to its waller, you know. It's always mm -hmm. going to go back to where it came from type of thing. Um I don't, I, th I think when it comes to personality wise beliefs, you know, people show you the true you and they don't really ever change. They might change some of their viewpoints about said subject, but they're still going to be that same person in my mind. I've yet what to about, see somebody completely change in that aspect. What about people that are easily swayed? What do you mean? So, what do you mean? Uh, just people that can they change to not be easily swayed yeah no i don't think so oh. they're gonna be they're always gonna be a follower that, that and that was one of the things i was gonna bring up about people that are easily swayed because they are followers and you've got to have some kind of leadership mentality in you to make some kind of change no matter what the uh, goal or object is at least I mean, that's the just, way I see it. I agree. I mean, it's no different like in a wolf pack. Not everybody can be alpha. You know, you got to have some betas. So if you want to be an alpha, you know, people out there, uh, if you're on YouTube watching this, make sure that you, you know, do what this alpha says. Hit that like button. Subscribe. If you want to be an alpha like us, Big Show, tell us what can people do to change their existing habits? What mindset should they adapt? It's easy to say, I'm going to do it tomorrow. Well, I mean, or maybe the I mean, depend, it depends on what it is. Like there, like I can't sit here and tell you how to lose weight. Cause obviously I'm, I'm a bit, I'm a big boy and I haven't done it yet. So I haven't changed my mindset to do that. However, I was raised by two alcoholic and drug addicts growing up. I don't do both. That's a mindset. I refuse to drink. I refuse to do drugs. So and you know what? That, that's a mindset. Right there. That 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 that's mental willpower right there. Um I admire that in you so much. You don't drink any alcohol. 
Because believe me, you know my team. You know the stress they put me through. I got to have me a little shot every now and then because if I don't calm my nerves, um, I, I might be on top of a bridge somewhere. Right. Um, you know, so it, it, what you can do, you just have to decide and follow through and don't make whatever the end goal is too daunting. You have to break it up in, you know, many bites. You know, what's that See, old saying? You, you don't eat a whale all at once. You eat it, you know, with a hundred thousand bites or whatever. So yeah. one bite at a time, one day at a time, um, you know, just using my mother uh, who passed away in January as an example. Um, she was 15 years sober. Um, and, you know, just one day she decided I'm done. And, you know, for 15 years, she, to the day she died, she was, she was sober, even towards the end of her cancer, where she was really hurting hard. Uh, she actually had a, a contact. She told him to go get her some weed so she can feel better. And then she changed her mind. She's like, I know I'm not going to break my sobriety. I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to deal with the pain. So, um, that, you know, is it's a mindset. Power. That's yeah, superior it's a mindset. mindset. Yeah. And, and, and touching on what you said about, you know, going through the steps and using weight loss as an example, because you can't just say, for example, I'm 200 pounds. I want to be 180 in four in five weeks you, you you can't just wake up and say okay i've achieved my goal you've got to map it out and and by breaking it down you can say okay i want to lose two pounds each week for x amount of weeks that's how you break that down too many people look at the big picture the end game and they struggle with that and they don't even know where they are from point a to point b they just see that they're not at point b and they give up but if you if you stretch it out and you break it into those parts, then all of a sudden you see, OK, from A to E, I've gotten to B to C and to D. I'm going to make it, you know. Yeah. And, and that's and you also have to have the the how, you know, OK, I want to lose 20 pounds in five weeks. I'm going to do that by losing two pounds a week. I'm going to lose two pounds two week in a week by doing walking, you know, for 30 minutes a day or whatever it is. You got to keep it, break it, you know, break it all the way down and, you know, check mark, check mark, check mark. And by the time your list is done, you'll have met your goal. Yep. And I would actually go as far as to say, make your end goal a little bit loftier than what you really expect or want. That way, if you fall short, you've still achieved what you originally intended. But see, that's where I disagree with you because you're lying to yourself. You're giving yourself an out for not succeeding. No, I said if you don't succeed. No, so if I say, hey, I want to lose 100 pounds in five weeks, but only lost 80. Okay, now that's too big. It's got to be a reasonable. No, I'm just saying, you know, you yeah. said make them a little bit loftier. Okay, I want to lose 40 pounds in, in five weeks, but I only lost 35. Well, you still lost 35. I mean, but you gave yourself an out. The well, was 30 was, was 35 originally what you wanted? See, if you want to lose 35. No, the say, original was 20. Okay, if the original is 20, why not? And this is just me. Why not say, let me try to lose 22 in five weeks? I only need to lose 20, but I want to go for 22 just to see if I so can. Just you say, know. So just make your goal. I want to lose at least 20. Yeah, I, I guess in my mindset is because to me that over I mean, I, knowing me, you would give me an out. Why well, you still did this? You know, go ahead and reward yourself by eating a donut. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. And if you lose 20 pounds in five weeks, you deserve that donut. <laughs> right. Because <laughs> that's a little bit more than two pounds a week. Um, so. We, we talked about changing those habits and, and what it takes. Um, what about failure? Everybody fails. And, and the difference is, I know a lot of people that fail and never try something again. And then I know a lot of people that continue to fail, but keep trying the same thing. 
I'm going to tell you, I would if I had to side with one of those two factions, it would be the ones that continue to fail because at least they are still trying. That never give up mentality. I'm guilty of that. Um, now, I'm not saying do the same thing because then you're going to keep failing. That's the definition of insanity. But, you know, to continue to try to find new ways to succeed, even if you continue to fail, I think that's much better for you than giving up and saying, oh, I, I, I'm just not going to try that again. It didn't work out for me. Because one of my mantras that I've always lived by, you never, ever want to wake up, whether it be five years, 10 years, 15 years from now, and wonder, what if? Because by then, yeah, it is too late. This is true. This is true. And I think most success, most successful people fail more than they succeed. That is very true. Again, that goes back to the mindset. But we're all guilty of deciding not to continue on something because we failed. You know, it hurts too much, you know. Um, <clears throat> you know, being a, a martial artist, the two belts that most people stop working out at are yellow belt which is your very first belt after white mm -hmm. and your brown belt, the belt just before black belt. Mm. So if black belt is the goal, it's the first degree, you know, and, and, you know, I have not the two bone horn, but I mean, I'm, I'm a fifth in one system, a fourth in another. Um, you know, the first degree is not the goal. That's when your actual training starts. I mean, that's when you really start to learn is once you have that, it's basically like graduating high school or college, and then you're now on the master classes. You know, now I'm in the graduate classes, the the higher up in rank that you go. But most people go to yellow belt, they test, and it's just too hard. They just don't want to continue because they just know what it is. And then when you get to brown belt, there are three degrees, first, second, and third, depending on the system. Some people start at third degree and then, second and then first and once you're first you test for black and then some it's first second and third once third you test for black but each of those levels regardless of which direction it goes is more difficult than the last so yeah. a lot of people tend like man this i'm never gonna make it type of thing but you know once you get past those hurdles the whole world opens up to you martial arts wise so um you know you have to change your mindset to get past that. And, you know, that's what I said. Most, most people quit at those two stages. I would say one more thing in wrapping this up. Sometimes it isn't about you. It's about the people around you. Sometimes you might need to remove those people that are around you that keep you down. Or remove yourself. Yeah, or remove yourself from that situation. You're right. Because uh, in order to make a change, if you really want to make a change and you know something or someone is holding you back, you need to get out of that situation. I agree. you'll never you know, succeed. Sometimes it's better to have four quarters to make a dollar versus a hundred pennies. You know, if you equate that to friends, you know, sometimes it's easier just to have four friends versus a hundred. Damn, I like that analogy. I'm going to steal that from you. So if you it's see it yours. on social media this week. It's yours. Appreciate it. Just give me All credit right. the first time. I, you know I will. I got you. <laughs> All right, my brother. Our final topic today, the National Football League. Dun, and this dun, has dun, been dun, a stress dun. stressful season so far. But this week was so stressless. Because I didn't have to endure my team shaming me. So, AFC West, we only got three teams to talk about. Raiders had a bye. Chiefs and Bills, they fell 24 to 20. But, and this is probably going to be controversial. I know some people are going to have something to say. That's fine. Bring it. I feel like... The Raiders, in their loss to Kansas City the week before, performed better than the Bills did in their win against Kansas City this past Sunday. I feel like the Chiefs left a lot on the table, 
And I felt at any minute they could just like turn it up a notch and they would have beat the Bills. They tried. <laughs> they definitely tried to turn it up a notch. I, I would say that probably, I don't know if outperformed is the right word, um, but I would equate it to about the same. I, I don't think you guys had as many turnovers. I don't even think we had a, a turnover from you guys, did we? No, there were no turnovers in the game. Yeah, I mean, so I mean, we we got Buffalo to fumble twice, I think, and I know that they picked us off twice. So, I would say, you know, maybe y'all executed a little bit better, um, but you know, not over sixty minutes per se. No, no, and you again, know? you know, let's preface that the Raiders did lose, Buffalo won. You know, and, you know, props to them. I'm not saying in any way the Raiders are better than the Bills. No, I mean. Yeah, Buffalo won, but the Chiefs also kind of helped Buffalo win. Exactly. And Raiders Raiders did help the Chiefs to win as well. Um so I mean, yeah, I mean I, I wouldn't necessarily disagree with that statement. I do know that, you know, I as a as a Chiefs fan, I don't feel completely bad that we lost that Buffalo game. Um, I actually feel encouraged that because I, you know. If, if I was being honest with you, I would say Buffalo going into the game was a much better overall team than we were. And they were, you know, they were the, the apple that everybody's chasing in my mind. Mm -hmm. However, after that game, I, I don't feel like we're that far off of them. And like if we played 10 times, we might win six out of 10. We might win, you know, five out of, you know, five out of 10. It might be a 50 50 split. You know, we're that close. Overall, I mean, we had two rookie cornerbacks playing, you know, um, the things that I didn't like are run defense. I mean, I, I don't think Singletary had that big of a game all year long. And I, mean, I would just agree with you because, him. you know, the week before you gave Josh Jacobs a season, a, a career high. So right. The, the I mean, run, run defense, defense is pretty is suspect. Atrocious. It's atrocious. And, you know, I if I had to blame, I mean, I'm going to throw some of this blame on Patrick Mahomes. I mean, he made two stupid passes. You don't throw interceptions in the end zone. You don't take points off the board. That was just dumb. Why are you throwing a jump ball to MVS when you have no, you know, if, if that if that pass was to, to Kelsey, I probably wouldn't even be mentioning this, you know, because. Yeah. They have that bond. But MVS, I mean, he can hardly catch a cold. So it's hard to see him trying to, you know, catch that. And, the, and you know, to the to the Bills' credit, that guy ripped the ball away and made it a great play. Um, but it should have never been thrown. It should have threw it away, lived to play another down. And then at the end of the game where they iced it and, you know, the dude jumped in front of uh, Sky Moore, you know, it was a bad decision. But also – why I'm complaining about Mahomes, it's also the reason why I love him because he makes those plays 80% out of the time. So you just kind of have to live with it. You know, he's not going to be perfect every game. No. Um, I wish Andy would do some more runs. I wish he would run the ball more because when we run the ball, if we run the ball over 120 plus yards a game, we've won. 60 or less, we've lost. And the two losses, our running games was retarded. Hindy's oh. a very creative coach. I wouldn't be surprised if he keeps this type of uh, more in your passing favor balance until the playoffs, and then he just flips the script then because that's when you really He's never run. been a running coach. He's never been a running coach, which ever. He's not going to change true. his stripes. We just had this conversation. He's not going to change. <laughs> this is who he is. Hey, for real, though, love that State Farm commercial. True. He might change for a game, but overall, yeah. not so much. So um, the other two teams in the AFC West, though, played each other. The Broncos and the Chargers. Bro, that final score was 16 to 19 in the Chargers' favor. Why was it that close? In overtime. It should have never been that close. Because both teams suck. And the only reason why what didn't end the tie is because Buffalo muffed a punt at the end. Great play by the San Diego oh, you mean, Charger you mean, guy to block him into it. Huh? You what mean Denver. Say? You said Buffalo. Yeah, Denver. Sorry. 
I'm still stuck on that Buffalo loss. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, the Chargers made a great play when they when he threw the blocker into the to the kick returner and made him muff it. I mean, that was a great play on his part. It was. So, I, to be honest, I turned it off after halftime because I was just like, this is just it's like watching paint dry. If you watch well, every Bronco game, any game the Broncos are involved in, it's painful to watch. Yeah. And San so, Diego, San Diego and Denver, or shit, San Diego, I keep saying that. Los Angeles and Denver are the, they're not very good. They're they're not. As much right, as so, I hate to say this, Oakland is better or Oakland. Damn it. Las Vegas is better than Denver and Los Angeles. Yeah. I will I'll say it. Well, once we learn how to win and get on a roll, uh, which takes me to week seven, Kansas City is at San Francisco. I don't believe Kansas City is going to lose two in a row. I find it hard to think that we would. But the 49ers are, are tough defense. Yeah. Denver is at the Jets. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets all the way. I think the Jets are going to smoke them. I don't think they're going to smoke them because nobody has smoked Denver yet. That's the true. games have been boring. They've been 13 to 10, 16 to 19, 12 to 9. Yeah, you're so right. The uh the 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 Broncos defense does keep them in it, but their yeah. offense doesn't do jack to help them out. I don't see them boat racing them, but I do see the Jets winning. The Chargers are at the Seahawks. I'm going to give a slight edge to Los Angeles only because. I'm going to go with the Seahawks just because mm. the Chargers are just beat up. Bose is out. Um, Allen has been out for the last few weeks. I know they're, I think their left tackle's out. So they're, mm. they're. Now. I'm not going to be hurt if Seattle wins. I'll jump for joy. That's, you know, one more loss in the division. And we can climb back out of this because we play Houston, and I got Vegas all the way on that. Where is it at? It is in Houston. No, no, I'm sorry. It is in It is in the uh, desert. It's in Vegas. I'll go with the Raiders on this one. All right. So... <laughs> We are nearing the halfway point in, in the season. Still a couple weeks off, but uh, they're going to have to show me something in this game. And, you know, that'll tell me whether or not I think they can turn it around. Who, the Raiders? Yeah. Oh, uh, they'll, they'll definitely turn We have, we have, we have turn five their, winnable games in a row right now. They'll definitely turn the record around, but you guys aren't making the playoffs, I don't think. Mm, I'm, I'm going to leave that up for debate. With, I mean, if, with, if we get with, another – with the Jets playing like they're playing, Baltimore playing like they're playing, the Colts are coming on hot. You know, I I, I don't think um, there's going to be enough enough. We play uh, the Colts, so that'll that'll factor itself later on down the road. You're right about Baltimore and the Jets, though, yeah, especially you got the teams Jets that you weren't the Jaguars, teams that you weren't thinking were even in the conversation are going to be in the conversation. That is also true. We got the Jags coming up in a few weeks too, so we'll let that so do we. We we'll do let too, that play so. itself out. Um. So this has been fun. I like these topics today. You know, we'll probably get a little feedback on one or two of them, but that's what we want. That's yep. That's why we say it. And and again, if you're watching on uh, YouTube, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Um, another great one, big show. Appreciate you, man. Yes, sir. We'll see you next week. You guys stay positive. Stay blessed.